Good morning, everyone. Today, I wanted to kind of hit back on the stress, right? Monkey, the monkey of stress that seems to be on everybody's back or the chatter monkey in our head. And the reason I wanted to do that was really interesting comments and questions I was getting regarding stress. And the reason I wanted to point this out is I think stress is such a huge piece of the disease you know, the dis-ease that we see in our culture, in our day-to-day -day lives. And it underpins this normalcy that we've made it so normal to live in this state of constant, even low-grade anxiety or worry or just feelings of not connected, right? That there's something missing, like we're always searching for something, like the happiness, right? I think the important piece here is that from a physician standpoint, I would always tell patients, stress management, do more with stress, do, do, do. I think that's the key here that I was always implying, and I didn't know better, that the doing, I mean, there was one more thing we had to do to deal with stress, which was stress provoking in and of itself. And I think, excuse me, my notes is right. Um, I think the important thing that we need or at least I understood and how I broke free from this constant stress, at least the stress that I created in my own mind was through a series of life circumstances that happened. Sorry, Siri is speaking to me. And it really brought to me the importance of how I was thinking about life and things that were happening. I, I had created expectations um, in my world, my made world, in my thoughts about myself, um, either expectations I wanted in the future, things I felt uh, in the past that I hadn't done as well, um, or maybe even the opposite, I was very prideful in those things. Maybe I was looking um, in the future to fix a problem or a uh, worrying about something in the, in the future that was going to potentially happen, right? So there's stress there. I think we can all see that we react to the stress, either that we, the stories we fed ourselves about our past, we keep them alive, trauma, uh, guilt, shame, you name it, regret. Uh, and then we build this future, like this future world that doesn't exist because it's in our head, uh, things that are going to happen, we think are going to happen, or things that we want to happen to make us feel better. So we live in this future to kind of decrease the current state of stress. So that, that for me was the really big piece. When I understood that I was living and making these thoughts, and then I was identifying myself with them, that I was living in the past and continue to feed it with my energy and my stress about that. Um, then I was, you know, identified with roles in my life as a physician. Would I make sure that I took good care of my patients as a mother? Am I a good mother? Am I a good wife? Am I a good human, right? Just trying to be a better human with stress. <laughs> Look, I need to be more kind. I need to be more whatever it is that I felt, right? I need to be smarter. I need to be younger looking. I need to be stronger. I need to do this, right? Because I am helping people. I need to do everything. Um, I need to have all the answers at all the times, right? So uh, bell that stress, right? And then I get the imposter syndrome. So again, you can see, I hope some of those monkeys that I was dealing with, you can relate to. Maybe that'll bring you into where I, how I found my journey into realizing that life can be full of peace and life can be without the chatter. And I used to think that I would need to replace the chatter with more positive chatter, which in and of itself is a good thing. Um, negativity can have a significant impact on quality of life. But what I did is I feel like I, I have gone beyond that. And it's a, it's a daily practice. That is the power. And so you're like, okay, what are you talking about? Well, let me try to explain. A few months back in, was it, I was at the ACLM at the end of October in Denver. And I think I shared this with you before. I've done a live about it, my Asian pair experience. Just bear me out. So I had 
did some running and exercise. I went down to the uh, food service area and was looking for breakfast. I was like, what can I eat that would be beneficial to me? <laughs> Plant-based diet. And out of nowhere, in the corner of this room, a set of fruit bowl, but on top of it was an Asian pear. And suddenly I got this most enjoy, the like joy of seeing a newborn baby, guys. And I've had three new, those newborn babies. I can't explain it. It was the most amazing experience, <laughs> like just giggle excitement about this Asian pear, a piece of fruit. In and of itself, is it just a piece of fruit. And I will tell you, I was on this high for like three days, just about this Asian pear. I promise I've never been on drugs. But this is what happened. And what was interesting, as I started thinking about it, I was like, man, I want to hang on to that. And that's what I thought. I thought I had to do something. Like, what did I do? What can I do to, to make sure? But what, it, what had happened in retrospect was I became very present in that moment. And I realized I connected to this Asian pair for some reason. It was, it was that moment. If you've ever seen the Grand Canyon or you've looked out onto a night sky without any of the city lights and you're just in awe of the vastness of it um, and your thoughts stop, right? When you're in this place of presence in this current moment, the thoughts cease to run amok in your head. And I had lots of those run amok. And they were saying things to me. They were saying things to me this was not me. It was those were my roles, my identities, my expectations. Like this, this ego component was so strong and so pervasive that it, I thought it was me. But then I noticed something. You know, I was noticing the thoughts. So that is the key. There's the thoughts, the identities, the 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 forms these things take in your head. But then you're observing them. That's the point. That is the real you. It's the being. There's the human thoughts, the human expectations, the human roles, the identities, the, the, the thing we put up in front of ourselves and we want people to see, the Facebook reel, the Instagram reel of what we want our lives to be. And then we stress out because we're looking at other people and like, well, I want what they have. And, da, da, da. and then there's this pervasive, again, judgment and comparison, humans. And so that piece about it, when I realized that I was creating these stories and these elements in my own mind, that is when the power came. Is like, hold up. There's something interesting about this. When I step out of it and I'm just observing the thoughts, this is the mindfulness piece, but I never truly got, got it. Like I didn't get it. And now I got it. And now I understand it. And now it's like you can step into it in any moment. It's available for everyone because we all have this amazing being within us. We have this incredible, wonderful journey um, that you can ha have now, just literally by being present. And what does that mean? Well, I think there's a few ways to enter, and these are all just pointers. They're directions to get there. And what I have found is a few things, and that's why I create these bracelets as part of my psychology of weight loss course, is breathe, be present now, and on the other side of it, this too shall pass. Now, this will get back to dealing with the stress. I have a new way of living. I, I believe that I've only had one moment in my life, and it continues to change. The moment from birth, right? So my being and my birth, and that moment is just continually changed. It's not multiple, multiple moments, right? I can't live in the future, and I can't live in the past. The future has yet to happen, and the past has already happened. They live as memories in my head. <laughs> And so whatever story, those memories can, it's kind of like you meet with someone and you have a discussion and you remember, you kind of think about something and they have a very different memory of it than you do. That's because you may have been right together and observed the same thing, but because of our perspectives and our experiences, we're going to see those things. We're going to remember them. We're going to have different meanings and emotional stories attached to those experiences. It doesn't diminish their worth, but when you're stuck in them, it absolutely can pervade your day-to-day -day life. It makes you think about things differently. It makes you project into the future about different things. It totally shades what is really the most important thing is living right now, which is all we have. So I hope this is making sense. I'm really trying. But it's like that piece of it is that when you breathe, 
and you focus in on the breath, again, remember that grand, that honest, that, that Asian pear, that moment with the looking at the sky or the Grand Canyon, the breath awareness. When I think about the air, or I just don't even think, I just observe the air coming in and out. I'm aware. And then I feel my body, like my fingers, my toes, that presence, stress ceases. That allows space. And that's when I talk about space, right? It's a space around a circumstance. It's a space around a thought, a feeling, an emotion. When you get into that moment, you're observing it, right? That's, you're walking, you're disconnecting from it, right? You're, you're not in the middle of the drama of the thought or the emotion. When you step back into this now, it's like you can now observe the emotion without, you're still going to feel it, right? You can observe it, you can turn towards it, right? That's important to observe it because you don't want to fight it. You know, we know what we fight gets stronger, right? That willpower, try to resist it. I don't want that urge. I, I'm not going to get angry and you get more angry or white knuckling it through something. When you realize that there's a few things left, you breathe, you get into this moment, you are aware of it. The second piece, the most important, I think, besides being in this present moment is accepting the fact that the way this moment has evolved is, is what it is. I, I cannot like it, but my me saying I don't like it is me fighting it, right? If I, and I'm not saying you have to accept it in the sense of like, oh, I'm just going to let people run over me and treat me the way I should, or, oh, I just have to deal with it because, yeah, again, that's that judgment piece. I'm doing a poor job, me, so I'm doing my best here. But when you uh, accept it, you surrender to the moment, the way it has built up. So maybe a huge tax bill came suddenly, and now you're really stressed out about it. You're angry at yourself for not doing this, or man, you're, the government is there taking my money. What is that doing? There's no benefit to you being upset, for you looking at it and being disappointed to be angry. But when you step back from it and go, okay, the tax bill is here. The tax bill is not going to change because I'm getting angry about it. The tax bill is not going to be different from because I'm upset or guilty or whatever that is. I'm angry at the, the whatever government because they're taxing me too much. Or it could be anything, expectations. Your family didn't call you on your birthday or someone didn't, your spouse didn't do something for you that you thought they should or whatever. It doesn't matter. The mad thing is about it is that we have to just surrender that this is the way this is. You don't have to necessarily be ideal. It doesn't mean that you're accepting it because you're just going to walk in, deal with life, just throw things at you. No. But once you accept it, you stop fighting, you stop having judgment about it. That is where the power is of peace. <laughs> because guess what? Once you've accepted the isness, I mean, it's insane not to accept it because it is what it is. Like, okay, this is what it is. My dog tore her ACL. The vet said it's going to be five grand. Okay. Is this something that I just have five grand laying around? No. But the, the problem, guess what? I can make it a problem or I can make it this is a life circumstance and I'll figure it out. And once I step back and just like, okay, this is what's going to have to happen. Amazingly, my pet insurance covered 90% of it. <laughs> so again, I feel like life comes with much more ease when we step back and like, I didn't have to worry about it. I didn't have to be anxious. Now, does this mean that someone's going to hurt you and you shouldn't fight or do something to protect? I'm not saying that. But in those circumstances, when it's a more dire situation, when you accept the fact that this is what is, you become very clear on what you need to do. And you're in a much more calmer state to deal with whatever that is. But in the day-to-day -day stresses that we make bigger deals, when we think about them and ruminate on them and stress about them, we wake up in the middle of the night thinking about them. When we take a moment to breathe, get back into our body and understand this is just a moment and in this very moment, what's the problem? Okay, the problem is I'm not accepting it. So I surrender, I accept it. So what's the next step? That is where, once again, you give space, you're observing your emotions, you observe yourself creating the drama of our life and creating the suffering, right? 
when you step back and allow it to be, what I have found is I'm doing this all day long. And it's like, I'm actually beginning to giggle at myself because there's so many things that I think, I used to think were such a issue, this underlying resentment or underlying, um, I want to be better or what, again, it's all just, I laugh at myself now. I, I literally laugh and going, wow, in this world that we're in this ball in this big space, and I'm worried about this? Really, Lori? So trust me, no one's harder than ourselves on ourselves, right? And when I started thinking about how I was parenting, I the expectations and how I was parenting, I needed to step back and allow them to be the humans, wonderful humans that they are and journey and sort of trying to like you can, you know, trying to make sure that they didn't suffer. That is that is not our rules. Um the suffering allows us to become conscious and it's so important. But anyway, so you have a stress, you have a situation, you breathe, you become into the current moment, you step back and say, all right, this is what it is. I've surrendered to this moment and I'm going to allow it to, I'm going to allow and acknowledge this is the truth of this moment. And when you do that, the stress disappears. And then guess what? You have a decision to make. You can really allow it. You can just go with the flow of like, okay, this is what this is where, where I'm at. I'm not going to do anything about it because I can't. Or from that state of a calm place where your inner intelligence can come forth, your the the emotions, the chatter is quiet, and your inner wisdom can come out. Then the right saying, the right action will come out of that moment when you've given space and wisdom, right? The space is the wisdom. The space is the place where you can make decisions, right? Then you will find that the decision is going to be easy because you're coming from a place of non-judgment and expectations, right? And we've removed the glasses and we're seeing it for what it is. Now, sometimes those are hard things you have to do. But once you accept that you just have to do the hard things and just get it done and not judge, think about it or judge about it, it's like this is what it is, it doesn't get hard to do, right? You know, the procrastination monkey um, that builds, 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 and you stress, stress, stress. What if we just took it at this moment and said, this is the reality of the situation. Okay, your boss like, this project is due tomorrow. has to be done. And there is no physical way that you can do that. You can you acknowledge that, okay, my boss has said this. You can acknowledge that this has to be done. But then you're like, you step back and go, okay, I know. I'm here. I see what needs to be done. I see that I can't get this done physically as a human being tomorrow. So what needs to be done? I can either not do it and stress about it or not even, uh, like if you had this project and it needed to be done, you can just worry about it, right? You can and not say anything and know that it might be an issue tomorrow when it's not done. Or you can step back and go, hey, boss, I hear you. I appreciate what you're saying, but I can't get this done. And just have that hard conversation. Now, depending on the person, they might get angry at you. They might, but just being present in that moment and just looking at that person. Now, they're projecting their own stories, their own anger towards you. By being present and just understanding that's what they're doing and not taking it personally, you can flow with the situation. Now, maybe that you end up having to change jobs or change anything, but I will tell you, my very personality, I'm still Lori Marbus, they call me Lori, is the same, but my whole being has changed. My calmness, my confidence that life is just the way it's supposed to be at this moment and things that are happening to me are happening to me because that's the way it's supposed to be whether I would conceive them as pleasant or unpleasant it doesn't matter and as I look back on my life and all the many difficult you know losses and struggles that has becomes more powerful to me as I look at that and go wow if I'd had this presence of mind and understanding in consciousness of the of the moment, my life would have been very different. But I had to go through it apparently. 
some of us need to be banged up against the wall a few times more than others and apparently mine was pretty it's pretty pretty thick skull but anyway guys i know this isn't like a check off list and a one two three four it's a more of a vague concept it's more pointers in that direction but i want you to start searching and thinking about the thing inside of you that you see that observes that that power that being the human is the the thoughts the feelings the emotions the roles the things we want people to see and the being the the being of the human being that's what that's where this sits when descartes said how do you know what is absolute truth that you exist he's like hmm well i can think therefore i am but i think there's a fallacy here you need to step back and say you think, but there's someone observing the thoughts. That is the truth. That's the being. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm sure it will continue to, to evolve as I as I learn and people can hear this, but um, just breathe, <laughs> just breathe. Take a breath and know that you're gonna be okay and that the moment will pass, but um, I sure hope this helps. But um, yeah, anyway, yeah, someone says, sometimes when you don't want to do the boss ask, you put yourself at risk for getting fired. That's the world we live in. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, we live in, in a world that a lot of everyone is walking around dealing with their own stories and their expectations and pain. And we, there's something about that that wants to be continually fed, right? Because it's familiar and it gives us control and we, we want to feed our own little monsters, not even realizing that those, those little monsters are what's creating the suffering. But once you let, release the little monsters and you don't feed them anymore, and um, life just gets a lot easier and a lot more pleasant to deal with. Um, and uh, again, you'll still have things happen that are would be what we consider non-ideal, but... Um, they don't. They seem to dissipate much faster, and what you might have thought was more difficult doesn't seem to be as difficult anymore. So, um, anyway, guys, check it out. I also made another bracelet. that's a little bit easier to wear. Breathe, be present now, and remember this too shall pass. Um, the good times will pass. The bad times will pass because this moment is ever evolving and. Just know that for me, I have a spiritual piece of me knows that at the end of my being of living this in this body, I'm going back to a place that's fantastic, that we all are one, right? We're all connected. And that's why I love human beings. I love the being of all my humans as every human, right? Whether they do things that I agree with or not. Yeah, I hope this helps. Um, I just so desperately want everyone else to feel and to know how amazing you are. Yeah. So anyway, I will leave that to there. I may have confused some more people. It was not intentional, um, but I'm just trying my best to share my own journey and hoping that it'll help you and yours. And so anyway, uh, peace, love, and blessings. Um, and if you're really interested in my plant-based diet, I do have the workshop live tomorrow. Check it out, the drmarvis.com website. If not, everyone, please know that I'm always sending you joy, peace, and love, and healing. And anyone who's watching this, I don't care who you are, you deserve it. You will. I am sending it to you at this moment, whether you're watching it live or later, because I know you're watching it because you need it. And that is my blessing to be a vessel of that. So. Thanks everyone for watching and spending time with me today. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you tomorrow.